All right, a week of driving in the Tesla. We are uh, cruising on the country roads. Uh, autopilot is engaged. I'm just, I'm kind of watching the road and just having the phone below my chin so I can just talk at it. I'm, so I'm not really paying attention to the phone per se. <laughs> I'm really just watching the road and driving along. Now I've got autopilot engaged here because I wanted to, I've been testing on this road. And one of the interesting things is that it does some good practices and does some weird practices. So I've been driving for a week with my wife. We've put almost 400 miles on in a week, which is a lot for us. But we've been sharing the car. She runs to work and runs some errands. And I run to the gym and things. So it's been interesting and it's fascinating. We both love the car. We both think that this is the most amazing car. It's, you know, kind of slick and clean. And I feel like I'm in Minority Report where it just starts up and goes. And I don't have to turn it on, turn it off, any of those things. Um, it's fun to drive. It handles well from my perspective, you know, for somebody that's driven a lot of SUVs in my life, just coming off an X5 and I've also had a few Porsches in the time. And really, I've just been having fun as we've been learning about the car and doing things. There are some strange things like in this autopilot, it's biased towards this middle of the road as opposed to the side, which I guess, I guess makes some sense. But uh, people out here in the country in these two lane roads, sometimes aren't quite paying attention so i notice that i tend to drive bias towards the side of the road not the middle of the road uh, maybe the middle of the road makes more sense in a city and that's why autopilot and full sd are biased that way right for pedestrians or parked cars and things but um, i don't like that part uh, autopilot won't slow down here at the stop sign and things so i do have to do that but what's interesting is as i come up on these curves the, this road goes up and down as I climb about a thousand feet out of the Parker area, it slows down as it gets to the top of the hill, which I think is fascinating, right? It's a kind of a good practice because you, you can't see over the hill. You don't know what's there. And occasionally there are deer and cars and things there. So um, it's neat to see that it recognizes things. Uh, I've just turned off autopilot. It's regenerating and braking. Actually, if uh, this comes in and it focuses, you'll see the stop sign on there because I've enabled the advanced visualizations that are there. Um, and there's one other interesting thing I wanted to point out on this road, which I, which I think is fascinating about Tesla. Uh, there's construction here where we've actually moved this road for about a quarter mile or so to the side. And there's all these signs that we see coming up. When I've been driving on this road, or I've been coming from the other direction straight, and it sees these signs, it disables autopilot because it seems to recognize that, well, first of all, it recognizes the speed limit changes. Um, that just changed to 35 with that sign. It'll just change to 25 with this sign. These aren't in the map, right? These aren't, this is brand new inside the last two, two weeks or so. Um, when I've gotten to this point, sometimes I've gotten a warning it disables autopilot because it says of the construction traffic and I need to take over and run it myself. Uh, possibly it's because of the 25 mile an hour zone, but that's been interesting of itself. Some good little reminders at the same time. Some other things don't work well. Uh, when I'm on cruise control, sometimes on these types of curves or autopilot, uh, not so much that it's the curve into traffic like this, where there's another lane of traffic, the car actually breaks uh, rather aggressively, even if there's not another car coming. Um, which I think is a mistake. Sometimes if there's a two lane curve, it actually does that as well. And, and it causes problems. As you can see now, I'm actually off the road on navigation because uh, this road, <laughs> they built this road about six weeks ago. And then about two weeks ago, they actually diverted the main road over as they're rebuilding it. But a week of driving, it's been fantastic as we go around. Um, you know, we watch the charge and energy. For the most part, we catch up overnight you know, when we have about 14 to 16 hours to charge on 110 socket. But definitely we've had a few days where we weren't catching up before the next trip. So we are still concerned about charging slightly and that will, uh, we need to get the level two charger installed at home. So I'm still waiting on an electrician to do that. Otherwise, uh, it's fun. I've been more energy conscious. You know, I don't I actually don't hit the accelerator very often. I tend to drive a little more careful. I have been watching data a little bit. I noticed my wife drives less carefully. <laughs> she, she likes to hit that accelerator. But she's been taking my son out, my sister-in-law, some friends 
so they could feel what the car is like uh, and how crazy fast it is. So far, we're thrilled with the purchase. You know, it's definitely still an expensive car, but it's, uh, you know, I've owned like 30 cars, myself and then myself and my wife. By far, I think the best car we've ever owned. And so we're very, very happy with the purchase and uh, looking forward to seeing how it goes in the future. So I've still got some other things to talk about. I'm going to do something on charging and the experiences there, something on data, you know, a few other things and uh, let you know how the experience is here for the Colorado Tesla experience down in south of Denver. So hopefully you've enjoyed this and uh, subscribe to the channel and keep watching. Thanks.